Okay, we've learned how to set up our adaptive views and we understand how design is inherited across views and how it can be adapted. We are going to do more practical exercises now and work on an adaptive template. First, we set up the grid and guides. I have opened the file that we were just working on and deleted the widgets but retained the adaptive views that we set up. Let's now set up some guides for our views. First our base view, this is our small view. We'll design at a fixed width of 320 pixels. This design will be scaled in viewports sized up to the next breakpoint of 532 using percentage values derived from the fixed widths. We work at the smallest width so we can ensure page elements are large enough in the smaller view viewports. We work at the smallest width so we can ensure page elements are large enough in the smaller viewports. Let's drag a page guide at 320 pixels on this view. Our first adaptive view is our medium view. You can see a guide has been inserted by default at the breakpoint of 533. I'm going to design our medium view at 560 because it's difficult to divide 533 up into equal columns. So this design will scale down to 533 or indeed up to 959 again using percentages that can be derived from the fixed design that we're doing. We're going to insert a preset 960 guide system into this view. Arrange, Grids and Guides, Create Guides. This design will use seven columns. I'm just going to delete these superfluous guides. Finally, the large view. This is triggered at 960 and is scaled up for larger viewports. You'll see there is a default guide inserted at our breakpoint. We'll design at 960, so we'll insert the same guides as we did for the medium. This design will use all 12 columns. Okay, we now have the guides set up for our designs. Next we will create the dynamic panels that make up the foundation of our responsive template. 